Hey everybody, and thank you for joining us today for our very first Beyond the Sermon. You know, we were talking about this in our teaching pastors, that every week as we sit around and we talk about the message for that week, and we come out with our outline and we say, here's our big idea, there's always more things to, to share than we have time for. And so what we're going to do in the Beyond the Sermon uh, time is I'm going to interview one of our teaching pastors, and they're going to talk about an area they wish they could have gone deeper in in their message, but time didn't allow it. So today for our very first one, we have Dr. Charles Cooper. Uh, we call him Coop. We're family members, right? Amen. Coop uh, teaches at our East Winter Garden campus. And Coop, let's talk about the message that we, we uh, gave yesterday in 1 John. What was it that you wanted to, to just clarify or even go deeper on? Well, we didn't have really have time to really go into all the issues that he's talked about when it came to sin. Several of us, we talked about the joy, and we did mention the fact that one of the issues that people have is denying that they are sinners. But we didn't really get to the sin fix, which is really what I believe John is emphasizing. Um, the chapter break, uh, as you know in your Bible, verse 10, logically is not correct. It probably should have gone on to chapter 2, verse 2. Oh, wait, wait, are you saying the Bible's incorrect? The usage of verses and chapters might be. Because They're not that's, inspired. That's not inspired, right. Yeah, that's somebody's idea. And, uh, and also, originally it was just a, a letter. Just a letter. It's just a long letter like we would write. We so why, write. why chapter and verse? So people would be, it would be easier for congregations together to find verses and chapters if we were reading it together, which makes all the sense in the world. Yes. And now that we've got it, we're stuck with it, whether it's right or wrong. <laughs> okay. And it just so happens that the, the thought of the paragraph continues all the way down to verse two of two, which is where he kind of summarizes that sin fix is Jesus Christ and what he's done because he is our paraclete or our paracletos. So define paraclete. Literally one called alongside. Um, it's usually translated comforter or advocate, uh, meaning that Jesus has come to play a very special role for us with the Father. And, he is now the one that is kind of our go-between, as it were. Absolutely. So how is Jesus our paraclete or our advocate? That's a great question. He fixed the sin problem by his death and burial, but more importantly, by his resurrection. Because Jesus, as you know, is the only person that did, rose, uh, came from the dead, and is now able to execute his own will. Right. And part of that is his having fixed the sin issue and that he died for sin and rose from the dead. And so our sins are now covered by the blood of Christ, which John makes reference to in verse eight, when he says, uh, when he says if we confess our sin, nine, verse nine, that he is faithful and just to forgive us. Well, the reason he can do that is because of what Jesus Christ did and now stands in our stead before the Father in an ongoing relationship. I mean, this is important in this series that we started when we started talking about confident, being confident. If you're not confident that your sins have been forgiven and fixed and done for with Christ, then you're not going to have the confidence. You're not going to stand with the conviction that you have in terms of being filled with the Spirit of God. You're going to be feeling guilty. You're going to be struggling, doubting, depending on just how bad the sin is that you committed. And you're not going to really explore the relationship that God wants with you that you really should have. Absolutely. And without confidence, there's no joy. There's no joy. Which, by the way, this letter actually begins with that word that the, the apostles wanted the people to be joyful in that they had been forgiven. Your sins have been washed away, wiped yeah. away. You can stand in confidence in front of your father. And unfortunately, 25 minutes, we didn't have time to really go to that type of depth on this sermon. So you've said it, but I want to reframe this. Um, I've sinned, I've confessed it, now how do I need to look at that sin? That's a great question. Um, the three objections that John's Gnostic people, those who denied who Christ was and what he did, they said, one, either you deny you're a sinner, I'm not a sinner, or you deny sin or rename it. John says neither of those is, is acceptable. What you really need to do is to confess it and allow the blood of Jesus Christ to continue to wash you because that's the process that God has put in place. Your sins have been washed away. You have been forgiven. You are righteous. Okay. Absolutely. Therefore, God holds nothing against you. And you've got to believe that 
to be confident. You have to believe that to have joy. That's exactly and right. And you have to believe that to be filled with all the fullness of God. Exactly. Which is our theme for the year. And wouldn't you know Satan would do everything to try to keep you from that, to make you feel guilty, to give you an overloaded conscience, which by the way never does anything for you before you sin, only afterwards. So the idea is that you have been forgiven and you can walk in that joy and be confident of that and that ought to bring a certain amount of joy into your spirit. Amen. Amen. And by the way, if you missed the message this last weekend, you can go on the website. We archive all of our messages, and it's the first message in the Confidence series. Hey, Coop, thanks for being with us, brother. Oh, my our pleasure. very first one. Absolutely.